When people ask me um, about being a glass blower, because they're like, hey, that's an interesting career. I typically um, get questions like, do you get burned all the time? Is it hot? Uh, can you make a living off of that? When I tell people I'm a glass blower, it's a lot of, ooh, oh really? Uh, interesting, that's probably fun. Do you get burnt often? The answer is yes. It is a foreign career path to go into. It's not accounting, it's not being a veterinarian. Being an artist is a little bit more off of the typical track of life. It's just less, less heard of, you know, so everybody's always like, wow, that's a cool career. But to me, it's pretty normal at this point. I love it, but it's definitely just, it's what I do. With glass making, there's, there's a community, like I said, that's present everywhere, but we really are equally invested in each other's work. And for anybody to accomplish anything, the team needs to be equally invested as if what they're helping with is their own. And I think that's what really uh, drew me to glass. Being a glass blower is uh, a really good, interesting team sport. We all think differently and bring a different skill set to the table. So the material's fascinating with all the diverse techniques that you can use to affect it. Glass is a mixture of mostly sand, soda ash, and limestone. 85 to 90 percent of our glass is going to be silica sand. Limestone is what gives glass its strength, so it will last forever. And the ash is the ingredient that lowers the melting temperature of the sand itself. We call that mixture the batch or the recipe. Everything starts off with a glass furnace. The furnace operates 24 hours a day. The temperature that furnace runs is 2,150 degrees Fahrenheit. It runs on natural gas. And we keep the glass hot so that it's always ready to be worked with. Once glass is cooled off, it becomes a solid material and it is unable to be shaped or formed stretched or inflated. The glass blower begins by taking a hot steel pipe, taking a small gather out of the crucible that actually holds the glass. As the pipe goes in, we twist a small amount on the end of the pipe, draw it out of the furnace, and then begin rolling it on the table. A small bubble will be introduced into that, and then the bubble will be cooled down so that the glass maker can add more glass to the blow pipe in order to achieve the amount that they need to create the size object that they want. If the glass blower wants to make a larger object, they will add extra layers and gathers of glass. Also, in between those gathers of glass, quite often, the glass maker will add color to the glass blowing piece. So, colors themselves in glass come from different metal oxides that are added to the basic glass formula. Once the glass maker has all the color and all the glass on the pipe, then the piece will be continued to be shaped informed with various tools. Some of the tools that we use in glass making would be the wooden blocks. Uh, these tools are used uh, to take a fresh gather and gain control of it. The block allows you to cool the surface of the glass while maintaining the heat in the core and from there you're able to move forward in a, in a controlled manner. And then we also use like wooden cherry wood paddles as well for flattening and shielding each other's arms from the heat. It's pretty common that you'll see uh, someone working on a piece of glass and then their partner or their assistant with a shield like underneath their arm to protect from that radiant heat. One of my favorite tools is, is probably the diamond shears. It's a really fun one to make. You can, you can cut the glass with it, you can create constrictions with it, um, and most of all you can, you can grab onto it and forcefully stretch or pull or or bend or twist, which I think is some of the most exciting aspects of working with glass, is when you can really take the reins and tell it what to do. The jacks are the oldest tool that we have in our glass blower's toolkit. The design of them is about 2,000 years old, uh, starting with the Romans when they invented the blowpipe and the punty rod. We can use it as a diverse tool to, most importantly, create constriction lines to give the glass uh, a plant breaking point, but you can also flip the angle of those jacks and use them to shape the glass by rolling it under the blades. You can use the spring as a mini paddle to flatten the bottom or add a contour or put the spout in a pitcher. Often the glassmaker will create what we call a neck. 
This is the constricted area on the bubble. The neck is the location where the bubble will be separated from the blowpipe. It creates a stress point. Without that crease, the bubble will not separate cleanly from the pipe. At some point, the glassmaker does have to remove the object from the pipe. So that tool will help that be possible. Most often, a transfer will occur. So the object will be removed from the blowpipe and transferred onto another metal rod, which we call a ponto or punty. The small gob of glass will be placed on the end of that punty, which will act as the glue, and then the glassmaker will be able to finish the opening of the object using heat, of course, to make the glass fluid, and of course, they'll also use the tool of the jacks and maybe some other tools to give the shape, you know, that final form that the glass blower has in his imagination. Once the glassmaker has finished the actual shaping of that object, then it will be broken off the pipes again, and while it's still hot, the glassmaker will put on a special little pair of insulated gloves, which protect his hands, because again, the glass is still over 1,000 degrees. That object will be placed into a large oven that we call the annealing oven. Glass left unattended will cool down too quickly and will shatter. Ancient glassmakers realized this more than likely, they probably would just bury their glass in hot sand, let the sand insulate that glass, and then again, dig it out of the sand the next day. And the fact that we have glass here at the museum that is over 3,000 years, I know for myself as a glassmaker and for my colleagues, we're very excited about the fact that the glass we make today, that piece of glass will be here probably forever.